All right, let's dive into some news. Uh, the startup DriveNets, which provides virtualized networking for clouds, has announced Network Cloud AI. This is designed to support the networking for cloud-based AI workloads. So DriveNets targeting hyperscalers that are running these massive GPU clusters for AI workloads, and you want to minimize latency and GPU idle time as data gets moved around these clusters. So sometimes Ethernet isn't the best approach, but hyperscalers may also not want to rely solely on InfiniBand because they're specialized hardware and specialized talent. So DriveNets is letting you use Ethernet NICs and broadband white boxes and Essentially, what they're doing is breaking the Ethernet frames into cells that can then be evenly distributed across fabric ports in a leaf spine architecture, so you get highly precise scheduling to ship data box to box. Uh, DriveNets is taking advantage of an open compute project called Distributed Disaggregated Chassis to make this happen. You know, this is weird, Drew, because I spent a couple of days last week thinking at no way that InfiniBand can survive. Surely not. And I went off and read a bunch of articles about InfiniBand and I dug into the NVIDIA's AI solution, which is heavily, heavily into InfiniBand. And, I, but what I realized was ultimately an InfiniBand only sort of scales to a hundred or a couple of hundred or maybe a few hundred nodes at most. I don't think the lack of um, experience with InfiniBand is a big deal because InfiniBand is a bit like Fiber Channel. It's mostly plug and play. You don't need to futz with it. It's not like an Ethernet network, which needs constant operation and administration. Mm -hmm. It was actually designed well at the start. It's a bit like the old FIDI and the token rings. They've got self-healing and a whole bunch of features in IB that way, way better than stupid Ethernet and dumb IP by comparison. But guess where the market is? It's not making InfiniBand chipsets and it's not making InfiniBand NICs anymore. Everybody then, you know, volume is where the prices is. And so what DriveNets is, is tacked into this, and their approach is to basically use cells. So instead of transmitting Ethernet frames across the backbone, you receive the Ethernet frames from the server, cut them up into cells, and now any jitter as you move across the network because of overloaded, you know, because of in-cast or because of multicast, is now obviated because the cells have a fixed length. And so as you come in, you sit in the buffers of the switch fabric, and you have a known time. And so you can never oversubscribe to fabric. You can move to something that's approximating a synchronous type of an architecture. Mm -hmm. And this is really important because um, in AI training and model generating, you're using massively parallel processing to hand tasks into GPUs. And then we've reached the limits of what's inside the server. Yeah? So, for example, if you look at a NVIDIA A100 chassis, they fit eight massive GPUs inside the server. The whole of the inside of the server is GPUs plugged into a motherboard mm. and not for display, just for processing, right? Mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. special type of GPU sort of optimized for training models and stuff like that. And so if you can put a, a small scale AI, you need a dozen servers in a row. I think they sell them in, um, they sell them in clusters of five. So you buy a rack uh, set of five racks and so you can build InfiniBand out to that sort of model. And they only, because these things are so power hungry, you're only putting like four or five of them in each rack. But we're now at the point where AI needs to scale up. There are entire uh, second tier cloud providers buying AI hardware so that they can do AI, uh, you know, offer AI services via the NVIDIA software stack to their clusters. And, and NVIDIA, I don't know if you followed the, the financial news this week, but NVIDIA re reset their sales projections for the next quarter upwards by 35%. So this means their sales went from something like, I can't remember the exact number, but it was like the final number was 1.3 billion and it was up from a billion or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the market went bonkers. They actually made $200 billion in the space of 30 minutes because the share price shot up. Well, some, <laughs> don't don't quote me on the numbers, go and look it up, but it was just this bonkers amount. Right. So NVIDIA's, you know, got this position, but InfiniBand for Internex is not going to scale much beyond, you know, 100, 200 types of clusters. You can make it happen, but you have to do a lot of work to be able to do it. And so um, now it's true that InfiniBand has some specific features for direct memory transfers. So you can actually transfer from a memory location on this server to a memory location on that server. And InfiniBand has a specific set of software features to say, I'm not going to transmit and say, pass it down to the operating system, down to the NIC, down over the network, back up the NIC, reassemble it, hand it back up, which is very processor intensive uh -huh. and very latent, very slow. So InfiniBand reduces that. You can actually use the software mode. So I reckon we're going to see a lot more of this uh, AI Ethernet or AI data center networks. So what uh, DriveNets has done here is beat most of people to the market. They've actually produced a cellular style of technology across the backbone using Jericho 3s, I think, in the announcement. Is that right? Uh, yes, Jericho 3s. Uh, and mm. also the Ramon chipset. Yep. Right. 
So they're using a, a specific set of white box equipment here to run their software on using a cellular backbone to give you a much uh, jitter-free Ethernet network. And this is roughly equivalent to um, what Google is doing with the Tequila protocol. So I put a link to that in the show notes where you can go and see what Google there. Google published a little white paper, a unified low latency fabric for data center networks. And um, I mean, all power to drive nets for getting something out of the out of the box here really quickly and getting in the comp- competition long before Arista, Juniper, Cisco have have even talked about this. They've got a solution that's shipping. So well, I will say I've seen a Tech Field Day presentation from Arista talking about their ability to support. Uh, AI workloads on an Ethernet uh, a fabric uh, using protocols like RDMA and Rocky. So I, I'll see if I can find that link and drop it in the show notes. So Arista is also uh, making efforts here. But mm-hmm. yes, kudos to DriveNets for, I mean, obviously targeting hyperscalers at the outset because they're the ones building these networks to, to process their own workloads and workloads for customers. So Rocky Rocky is one of those, you know, if your only tool's a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. <laughs> Rocky is pretty much failed for everybody who's used it. Mm. And at the end of the day, the challenge is, is that if you can only build a network out of Rocky and have no other traffic, uh-huh. then in theory you can make that work. But it, Rocky doesn't do it quite so well, as and it's very difficult to sustain and requires you to do a whole bunch of things. Um, RDMA over Ethernet is the software that you use to write from memory location to memory location, remote uh-huh. direct memory access, yep. RDMA. Yep. And But that doesn't um, remove the jitter. It doesn't remove the latency that happens. It doesn't stop the buffers from pooping themselves and dropping frames or dropping packets, right? Well, of course, uh, argue would Arista would argue that it has the deep buffers to prevent those kinds of, of jitter issues. But yeah, I'll let you argue with Arista about uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> I think the whole deep buffer thing is overblown. Uh, there is some value there, but that's a bit like saying when you go to the petrol station, you buy the 95 octane, not the 92. <laughs> um, right. Ultimately, you know, I do think that I think this is incredibly clever of drive nets. I can see there's some plenty of room here for a better solution to come out uh, because they're not requiring any special Ethernet NICs here. Right. So you can just go in um, and a lot of AI fabrics, a lot, a lot of AI data center fabrics are actually going to be pots of gold or patches of gold or a gold mine inside the brownfield. You're not going to, um, you know, wipe out your entire data center network and then put this in to replace it. You're just going to, put in a bunch of switches and a bunch of AI servers, and they're going to be over there. And, you know, there'll be a cable going over to the AI sort of thing. (laughs) And this network won't be used for anything else because Mm -hmm. you just want to maximize the performance of this. So it's a pot of gold in the middle of a brownfield. So there is definitely room here for direct drive nets to get traction with customers who want an AI, you know, or a highest performing Ethernet network. It's sort of like very different from HFT. You know, we talked a lot about low latency trading or, High frequency trading networks that absolutely want the lowest latency. Uh-huh. It's it's, but it's very different to that. AI actually has to send traffic. Those high HFT networks are very low volume. All they want is fast right. transmission or fast right. propagation. These networks need to be running at a hundred percent throughput, at consistent jitter. Even better, it should be the fastest possible network that you can build, and that's where InfiniBand falls down. I think, to my uncertain knowledge, because I wasn't able to to get a, a 100% confirmation is that InfiniBand caps out at about 200 gigabits per second. Huh. And Ethernet is already at 800, and they're already talking about 1.6 terabit Ethernet in the next two or three years. So which one are you going to you know, which one are you going to do? Yeah, don't bet against Ethernet. That's, no. that's the rule. It may be cheap and nasty, but it's all, you know, <laughs> right. that's why everybody's buying it, cheap and nasty. Cheap and nasty. <laughs> 